Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Round 23 in the bag and it was a success. So, managed to scrape myself back into the top 9% with a pretty decent score of 1446. Yeah, pretty happy with it. I played some players that scored a lot more than expected in certain positions and um, finally nailed a captain choice as well which was satisfying given the year that i've had with captain choices so yeah 1446 went up an extra 1852 green spots which was satisfying to see so yeah let's go over it see how we're going see what happened and we'll talk about a lot today i think um I've already made the trade. I'm only making one trade this week. I've only got two trades left. So I don't exactly want to use both my trades for this week. So I've got a plan. I'm going to stick to it. Uh, we'll go over captain choices. What I think is the best thing to do. And um, VC options. Potential trade targets for other people. Yada, yada, yada. We'll go over a bit. So let's... Let's get into it. Um, we'll start at the top. So Cookie with a 69. King, King Sonny Luke with the 1. So owners are absolutely thrilled with that 1 point. Um, Fanua Blake with a 61. Taps with a 67. Fafita with a 94. Nicara 50. Horse 56. Maddo. So... He finally plays through the middle. He starts in the second row in the first half. Scores really poorly. I think he was on about 21 points at the half. Gets moved into the middle and finishes on 83. Yeah. If only he did this for the last eight weeks. But anyway, um, come out with the 72. Cleary, 103. Hines with the 100. So that obvious battle between SJ, Cleary, Hines combos. Um, it's definitely heating up. So I'm pretty sure SJ is taking the lead. He's ahead by about 40 points at the moment. So, yep. Um, Cody with a 49. Cody has been pretty dismal for the last few weeks. Ever since I got him in. So I broke Cody. Um, Maru with a 97. Uh, Mazu 53. I played Asako for 124. I was very happy with that. A lot of people sold. A lot of people traded out Asako. A lot of people moved him on. I kept strong. And it paid off. So 124 there. Garrick with a 62. Timiko with a 64 with a late try. So, Mulatalo comes back into the side. So, obviously, he's been named. My trade this week, if you've noticed, is Suali'i. 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 Suali, however you want to call it. Um, I have traded Brimson out. So, because Brimson isn't named again. So, Brimson has absolutely me. He's, I got him in, in between game two and game three of Origin. And he has absolutely just been a atrocious option for me. Played two games, I'm pretty sure. One of those games, he came off injured. So, another wasted trade. Good on him. Um. So, yeah, I've gone... Rimson to Suali'i via duels and moved Manu up into the 5-8 spot, which gives me cover for round 26 when Cody Walker plays the bye. Manu's got the Tigers, so I can use that as cover, which is really, really good. Suali'i's got the Tigers as well in the round 26, so he's also got goal kicking this week against the Dolphins. Up against the weak side with Manu as well, I think he will score very nicely. So 
I've moved Ponga down into my fullback as my only fullback option for the remainder of the year, which I'm perfectly fine with given the Knights draw. He is a definite, genuine captain choice this week, but we'll go over all that um, in a sec. So, I am looking at my front row, and I do wish that I had Payne Huss and Tino for the run, for the run home, but I think Vanilla Blake and Taps will do a job, enough anyway. I don't know if they will, they will likely not score as well as Tup, as Payne Huss and Tino, but um, front row this year, it's been, yeah, it's been very meh, so very, very surprising that at the end of the season, Fanil Blake is ranked first overall in regards to his total points scored. But obviously, Tino and Haas are the better front row forward options for the remainder of the year. Better super coach players in general. But I was lucky enough to hold Fanil Blake throughout half of the season. I'm pretty sure I got him right back in like round 14 or 13. So it's been pretty good. Um... Let's have a look. Over the next couple of weeks, given I've only got one trade left, I think I'm okay. Like, none outside of the bunnies in round 26, none of my players have a buy coming up. So, it's okay. I'm benching Garrick this week. Obviously, he's got the Panthers, and you just don't play players against the Panthers. I've got Timiko on the bench. He's up against the Storm in Melbourne. Look, I think the Raiders can play a game. I think they can play well. I just don't like Timiko's matchup in Melbourne. But, yeah. If I was to play someone over... If I was to play Timiko over someone... It would be, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. There's no one there that I would play over. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. Timiko and Garrick are staying on the bench. And that's how it is. So we'll go over most traded in. So most traded in, Toto, Latrell. I'm worried about people bringing in Toto because I think that once Panthers solidify that minor premiership, which will probably happen in the next couple of weeks, I will not be shocked if um, Panthers start, if Ivan starts resting some key players and uses his reserve side to to finish out the rest of the season. So be very, very careful with bringing in players like that. Um, people rushing out to get Luttrell. I understand, great matchup, but the Bunnies are also quite weak in the middle at the moment. So I don't know if Luttrell is going to be that dynamite player that he's once shown. The Bunnies don't look the best, and they showed that last week against the Sharks. They played the Sharks into form. So, and Luttrell's obviously got a buy in a couple of weeks' time. So, yeah. I thought about bringing him in myself, but I'm... I'm going to um, I'm going to death ride Latrell. I think it'll be okay. Fingers crossed. Um, people bringing in Tino. I get it. 800k for a front row forward this time of year though is a bit. It's a lot. But if you've got the funds and you've got the trades, go for gold. Sj and Dallin. Yep, I get it. I am very glad. Because last week, I was so close to bringing in CNK. I was so close. And I changed my mind on the day. And I was very fortunate to, to, to see him copper HIA. Very, very fortunate. That would have absolutely wrecked my, wrecked my score for the week. So, yeah. Pretty happy with that. Um, people trading out Garrick, I don't understand. Garrick has a good couple of matchups after this week. 
yeah, I don't get it. But anyway, everyone, every team's different. Let's go over captain and VC options. Now, Panthers, their forward pack is obviously the best in the comp and is up against a depleted manly forward pack as well. I think Panthers have an absolute field day tomorrow night and it's going to be scary for people who chose SJ over Cleary. I think um, I think we're going to see 150 again, or at least close. I think he would definitely go over 100. Well, we're not speaking in absolutes, but he'll score well. He could score over 100. He could score 150 plus. Um, if he does score the 150, I will definitely VC, or I'll definitely be looping as um, the late males come through that Mitch Kenny is not playing. So that means Sunny Sunny owners can rejoice. That means that Sonny will um, get some minutes behind him and not score one point this game. He'll probably score 20 or 30 which um, obviously softens the blow for the loop, um, which is pretty good, finally. Oh, Sonny. King Sonny. Never again. Um, what else have we got? So, VC, Cleary, into the Ponga captain is my way. My second option would be Hines against the Titans. Again, VC Hines into Ponga because Ponga plays late on the Sunday. Both looking at 140 plus to loop because Ponga against the Bulldogs, the last time he played the Bulldogs was a few weeks ago and managed to score 180. Yes, the Bulldogs have a slightly different team going into this game with Sexton, a couple of other players coming back from injury, but I still think the Knights will be too good and I think the Ponga and that left edge is they're gonna they're gonna do some damage again, and I think Ponga is going to reap the rewards from that as well. So SJ against the Tigers, I I think it's risky because we don't know exactly how they'll play without CNK. Yes, SJ scored quite well last week without. CNK, but it's a different game. The Tigers have a decent forward pack. They've got nothing to lose. They've got the spoon wrapped up. I, I think that's a dangerous game to be captaining SJ. I, I really think that there's better options out there. So, yeah, those are my options. I think for sm there's some smoky options out there as well. So you could VC Manu. You could VC. I don't think there's really anyone out there outside of Manu actually. When I when I really come to think of it, because Tanua Blake, he won't have that big ceiling in him. One thirty, one forty to captain. Manu could. He could get a couple of tries. Mm. I'd go with the Cody Walker maybe. Cody Walker, maybe the Dragons are very, very light through the middle there, but so are the Bunnies. Yeah, I don't know. I'd just stick with the, the Cleary, Hines, SJ, Luttrell, maybe, and and just keep the C on the Ponga for the Sunday afternoon. I think that's the safe bet. Um, anyway, let me know how everyone went on the weekend. Let me know your rank. Let me know your trade situations. I want to see it all. I want to hear it all in the comments. And um, yeah, if you haven't subbed up already, give it a give it a sub and big things coming next year. Big, big things coming next year. So keep keep going. Keep it up. The season's not over yet. A few weeks to go. So anyway, good luck. Good luck for everyone this week and let me know how you go at the end of the week. Cheers.